Hey guys, happy September. Welcome back to another video. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do a video because I was at the Seahawks uh, Broncos game here in Seattle. As you guys know, I live pretty much on stadium property and um, uh, it was an amazing game, but I screamed my voice off Monday night. So um, you're going to have to bear with my voice, but I really wanted to get this video out because it is super important. Um, we just talked last month about uh, the difference in vinyl, cassette, uh, CD, and streaming, and um, the goods and bads, to the difference in the different sounds, and, and you know why some prefer some over the other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's did it's done really well. You guys have been giving me incredible feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, it was a fun video to do, and because it did so well. And you, you guys know whenever I get something in the system or I make a modification, I, I post for you guys on social media and I also try to do a video as my system grows and changes. So with that being said, I want God, I, this is such an amazing experiment that I got to do um, today. And I wanted to make a video right away because we're about a, a couple weeks away for posting for September anyway. So I figured I would make this video about isolation and the different styles of isolation um, and the sound differences that they can make for good or bad and why not one fits all. Okay, so what happened here, guys, is I love my still points. I've had them in for a long time, but in this room, I just really felt like I was losing some of the impact, some of the attack you know, some of the uh, transients, some of the leading edges, the sharpness in the music. And I have still points under everything. And I spent so much time this week, I mean, two days straight, like 16 hours a day. <laughs> uh, it was crazy. It's nuts. Sometimes I think I'm insane. But uh, uh, trying to get these speakers towed in and out and, uh, you know, back from the wall and, ex uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I am going to be looking at some room treatments you know, especially the synergistic research, what do they call the NFTs? I still want to get those. But, um, you know, I'm working with what I have and it does sound amazing for what I have, but I'm always searching for that next best thing because that's what audiophiles do, right? Where we have a sickness. <laughs> so um, what I did is I took out the still points from all of my equipment except for the turntable and the CD player. But I took them off the power conditioners, off the DAC, out from under the amplifier, all my attack came back. Everything came back. Okay, I was so stoked. I couldn't believe it. The only problem is, is that my headphone amplifier that was so damn dialed in because it was just sitting on the bare Macintosh metal here, the still points underneath the Mac gave this thing such an amazing balance. No tube glare or, or hashiness or haze. Um, very open, airy, spacious. Uh, everything was there. Nothing was dulled or boring or, or, or you know, dulled really is the best way I could put it. Um, and nothing that was sharp was too sharp. It was just such a perfect balance. I could listen for eight hours and never have any fatigue. So that went away, unfortunately. I lost that. And I was like, oh my God, what a compromise. What do I do? Put them under here and lose a little bit in the big system and have my amplifier, headphone amp back compromise. I said, no, 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 no. We're going to experiment. And because I'm me, and because I tried a lot of different things and I've worked at a few different stores, I've got some leftovers. So I grabbed my audio box and I basically started with these three. These are what I have to work with. So what these are is these are still points. These are a volcano shaped isolation device that has a ceramic ball that when you push down on it, uh, when the equipment pushes down on it, it actually has three more in here that expand out like a flower and touch this material that turns the vibration into heat and dissipates it. And it's incredible. It, it's a very euphoric sound. It's very smooth vocals. Everything's just open and airy in the room. However, you can, based on how many you have them under and where you have them under, first of all, you have to use four. You cannot use three like many other devices. You have to use four of these to work, okay? And um, uh, where you put them under the equipment, you can literally slide them to the left or the right underneath the equipment. You have it out, it's warmer. You push it back, it gets tighter and cleaner, but more edgy. 
and you're, you're doing this balancing act constantly. And if you dust something and it bumps the equipment a little bit, you're going insane because you have to go back and try to find that sweet spot again where those still points were. So this was a love-hate relationship for me. Underneath the turntable and underneath the CD player, it's great for those two sources because um, you know I'm not going to be really bumping them or moving them around too much. A lighter component like a DAC or, 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 or a cassette player will just push it right off. Every time you push the play button or something, it's real frustrating. So um, what I did, guys, is I took these still points and I tried them under here on my tube amplifier. I use this as my guinea pig again because it's what I'm trying to get to sound right. Okay, so I thought, well, if it sounded good under this, the still points, they must sound good under this. So I took a bamboo cutting board and I put it under this and I put the still points under there and I tried every manipulation I could and it sounded good, but there was just this darkness or this kind of like also a kind of muddy, not muddy, how can I put it? A dull, a dull tone, a darkness to the whole presentation I just did not like. So I tried and tried to make these work and they were, it was to no avail. Okay, I'll put them over here. Okay, so step two. I've been saving these suckers forever, and a lot of guys don't like these. And um, same with the AudioQuest Zorbethane feed. I used to have those. Zorbethane or any kind of rubber, in my experience, does not work well. Um, it just um, flattens the sound and dulls it and muddies it. However, this is not Zorbethane. It's, it's, it's more of a softer rubber. I said, you know what? This might be a great compromise. And I put it under here. And I tried all kind of different configurations, you know, from the inside and outside. And man, it was so close. I thought I hit it for a minute. But as I listened for like 10 minutes, I started getting fatigued. And I realized that there, that tinginess, that metallic -y sound was still coming through. Now, to my point, guys, if I had this amplifier in and I just did not have any isolation for it, like again, when I got it, it went right on here with the still with the still points under the Mac and with the metal and that combination. Man, it was freaking euphoric, right? So when I took the still points out from underneath it and the ant fell on his face and went, "Oh my God!" Like everybody who bought this amplifier must be returning it, right? And then I thought to myself, you know, I, I even upgraded the power tubes in this. I haven't upgraded the preamp tubes, but they sounded great with the still points. So I said, "Something's up," right? A lot of guys at this level of headphone amplifier, I'm sure, have experience and understand isolation, especially with tubes. So this device, somebody buying it, setting on a desktop and just plugging it in and playing it. And keep in mind, guys, I have $1,000 interconnects here, over a thousand, here's like 1100 And I have a $400 power cord and it's still, oh, and a $200 synergistic purple fuse in here. And still I could not get it to sound right. And I could see why the guy before me that I bought it from, that was only a month old, warranty box, receipt, everything. He had it for 30 days and sold it because I bet he did not try different isolation. Okay, so again, that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this video today because I just experienced this myself. So, th so these were no-go. These almost cut it. They gave the euphoric openness and, and, and that tubey sound, just beautiful. You know, just I can't even explain it. Those second harmonic, second harmonic distortions are wonderful, right? So, but it failed. It did not pass my scrutiny. Okay, so lastly, I had my Black Diamond Racing Cones, BDR cones. And um, these are a carbon fiber material, and they actually come in different uh, versions. If I can get, the, get it close enough. You see that three there? Okay, this, these, there's threes for solid state, and there's fours for tubes, and you can mix and match them. I actually have these underneath my cassette player. I have, I have um, one type four and two type threes. And believe it or not, when I came over here and I did the different versions, all threes, fours, threes and fours, just all the different versions, I ended up landing on two fours for the back and a three for the front. And as I played it, it just wasn't quite there again, but it almost had everything I wanted. And I was patient and I just moved. There's three of them in here, just like you're seeing here. I, I, I moved them all the way to the back, one all the way to the front, 
Move the front one slowly, you know, underneath, moved it slowly back. It's probably sitting right about here. And then I brought these from the back up and in, right on either side of the power display, and bam! Everything came in just like it centered with the still points. Except I would honestly say that maybe it's a little bit more of a of a smoother or more realistic presentation than still points, not quite as detailed. Oh, hold the front door. Hold on a second. Guys, after I did this video, I'm cutting this in during the uh, filming here because after I stopped and went back, I remembered that I did not try three Vibropods, okay? They don't require four. The still points did. The BDR cones were three. I had put four under this and I did not try three. So I went back and said, maybe those four were too much of a good thing. Let me try three to make sure I give a fair assessment of all the products and hot damn, it freaking won. It beat the BDR cones. It's <laughs> so back to our regular scheduled program. I just wanted to say that these Vibropods won. Wow guys, right? You know, and, and what about the Gaia feet, right? That are sold for speakers and still points can also go under speakers, but there's the Gaia's. And, and I, I try to explain to people, not only does the isolation footers work and sound differently from all the others, but what you have your components under, are you using glass? Please don't. I, I don't even understand why high-end audio manufacturers use glass as a a shelf you want to use wood carbon fiber you know glass with leather over it if you have to but don't use glass it is very unnatural sounding it's very stringent sounding i've tried many different pieces of glass with many components i end up, always end up putting a wood cutting board on the shelf uh on top of the glass because it just doesn't sound good in this case i, I went with my vti rack it has the isolation here and the isolation here, so um, and the isolation at the bottom. So it's got one, two, three different isolation platforms for the turntable and the amp, and it's wonderful. What a big improvement! So with that, guys, um, that's the video I wanted to share with you. If you have components that are just sitting on bare wood, you know, when it comes to solid state, you're going to be okay. But with tubes, really take the time. If you guys can really take the time to, um, you know, look at doing something with isolation. Okay. Um, now over here, I wanted to give you guys a quick tip. I spoke with audience AV and they are sending me out because I'm having issues with some dropouts in title and, um, the, um, outlets on my chain light speed are not isolated from each other. They just have like analog and digital, but they're, I opened it up and they're sharing the same, you know, outlets. They're not each individually isolated. So I, I got a uh, power conditioner coming, a $3,500 power conditioner coming for this system. And we're going to go ahead and uh, AB some music ne on next month uh, regarding how the chain light speed at $700 compares to a $3,500 audiophile line conditioner from audience. So that's going to be a fun one. Okay, guys, thanks for bearing with the voice. I'm so sorry, but uh, it was a great game and uh, uh, no, hard feeling, no hard feelings against the Broncos fans. You guys got Russell Wilson and, and I'm, I'm tore up about that, but um, it was a great game. So audiophiles, music lovers, I really appreciate you. What a cool time it is to be alive and to be creating and to be enjoying music and culture and art. Uh, uh, in your city. I know I see I follow you guys on Instagram a lot and see um, all what uh, everything you guys create and you invest in you're right at my level and higher and I learned so much from you guys too. So with that we will catch you on the next video guys. Take care.